It's way too cold to be out here. <laughs> oh my god, it's cold. Land acknowledgement. But what is that? Northwestern University describes a land acknowledgement as a formal statement that recognizes and respects Indigenous peoples as traditional stewards of this land and the enduring relationship that exists between Indigenous peoples and their traditional territories. My school, Trent University, describes a land acknowledgement as recognizing the traditional lands of Indigenous peoples and it's an appropriate way to show respect for Indigenous people, their ancestors and communities. It recognizes the significance of the land and the importance of our individual relationship to that land. A land acknowledgement is often affiliated with an institution or a corporation. However, they can be far more effective when they're personalized. Today, I'm going to help you do that. Ani, my name is Xiaonang. I'm an Indigenous content and video creator on social media, as well as a full-time student at Trent University in the Indigenous Studies undergraduate program. So what is the history of land acknowledgements? When the Truth and Reconciliation Commission of Canada was created and they traveled all around Canada collecting first-hand accounts of the residential school experience and just colonization as a whole, they created a report. And when they delivered that report to Canada, it rose in popularity the need to foster healthier relationships with Indigenous peoples. Canadians began talking about Canada's history with Indigenous peoples and how we can foster healthier relationships moving forward. And it's then when the common land acknowledgement kind of rose to fame. But land acknowledgements aren't just cultural protocol in, in modern Canada. A land acknowledgement is very similar to our cultural protocol that we had before colonization. For us as Indigenous peoples, especially my people, the Anishinaabe people, when we greet one another or when we travel, we often show up and we present ourselves with a positionality or some, some type of acknowledgement of who we are and where we come from. For instance, before I speak at an event, I'll often say this. Basically what I just said there is I introduced you to my name, my clan, that I'm an Anishinaabe man and where I come from. When we offer that positionality, when we offer that personal story about ourselves, we're telling you where our information is going to come from, where our behavior, where our actions, where everything we're about to do or say, where that comes from. So the contemporary land acknowledgement that we use today is very similar to that. It's a, it's a way for non-Indigenous peoples to partake in a portion of Indigenous cultural protocol. When and where are land acknowledgements used? I mentioned before how when Indigenous peoples introduce themselves, they often do so before speaking at an event or they're invited to another person's community. Land acknowledgements can be found at the beginning of community events, gatherings, conferences, school assemblies, wherever people are going to gather and partake as a community on the territory of a first peoples, that is where you will find a land acknowledgement. With that being said, it is very cold, so I'm going to head back inside. So now that we understand the history of the land acknowledgement, when and why they're used, it's time to create one of our own. First things first, when First things first, when creating your land acknowledgement, you want to ask yourself, who is delivering this land acknowledgement? Is it yours alone or is it a group of peoples? Whether it is yours alone or a group of peoples, you should all collectively or alone research what your relationship to the first peoples and to the land looks like. It's during this phase of your land acknowledgement that you begin to ask yourself the hard questions. What are you doing to foster a healthy relationship with indigenous peoples? How can you support the indigenous peoples of your territory? And why do you want to create a land acknowledgement in the first place? Do your research. The research phase is arguably the most important part of your land acknowledgement. It's during the research phase of your land acknowledgement that you find out who the indigenous peoples are to your territory. Find out as much as you can. Learn their traditional territory names. Learn their traditional names. Learn their histories their languages, and even their worldviews if this information is accessible. You need to get to know who your land acknowledgement is being targeted towards. Simply researching a land acknowledgement for your territory and copying pasting someone else's is not enough, because in order to create an effective land acknowledgement that is personal to you, 
and your relationship with the indigenous peoples of your territory, you have to do the research and you have to make that connection. Past, present, and future. When creating your land acknowledgement, you do not want to simply talk about the past. Indigenous peoples are not only the thing of the past, we exist in the present and we're gonna exist in the future. When creating your land acknowledgement, research who the indigenous peoples were to your territory, research who they are today, and research where they're moving forward in the future and how you want to create an effective and fostered healthy relationship with your community. Far too often are indigenous peoples just placed in the past as a part of Canada's history or a chapter in Canada's history. And that's simply not the case. We're one of the fastest growing populations in Canada and we're here to stay. The final stage of your land acknowledgement should come with a commitment or a call to action. This call to action or commitment often comes from the information that you found while researching your community and the first peoples of your territory. In that research, you will have found out ways in which you can support your community. And it becomes your responsibility at the end of your land acknowledgement to end on a commitment or a call to action. Or in the form of a call to action, you can call on your community to show up for the first peoples of your territory, whether it's through donations or showing up to events and showing up for those people. It could be supporting local indigenous business. The list goes on and on, but that's up to you to research your community and find out what their needs are. Some final tips. You don't need to write an essay. A land acknowledgement can be a, a few sentences long to a paragraph. You don't want to bore your audience with this long, drawn out land acknowledgement that tells a big sob story uh, or some big family history about how you came to this territory. Keep it short, keep it sweet, and make sure to always end on a commitment. Some final really important tips for creating your land acknowledgement. Indigenous peoples are not only a thing of the past. I've heard far too many land acknowledgements that just talk about how the indigenous peoples once cared for this land and how we're thankful for them for doing that. But that's not the case. We care for the land in the present and we're gonna care for the land in the future. So it's important to always talk about the past, the present, and the future. And the final most important tip to me is that your land acknowledgement should encourage education and not replace it. Your land acknowledgement should inspire other people to research their own relationships with the indigenous peoples and to learn how they can show up and be a supportive ally as well. But I think I'm gonna end it there. I'm gonna leave you to do your research. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave them in the comment section below. Miigwech for watching.